Cynthia Solomon. How are you today, Cynthia? Well, I feel great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I am Laura Hart, and I am the CEO and founder of RoboFun. And once a week, I have what I call my heart to heart series and interview people who I think are doing great work with children. And I am so lucky to have Cynthia here with us. Uh, before we get started, I want to do a few housekeeping things about uh, RoboFun. We are located on the Upper West Side of Manhattan at 102nd and Broadway. And right now we are getting ready for our spring camp, I guess winter camp next week. And a lot of classes are full, but there are a few that are still open if you're watching and interested. Um, and RoboFun offers classes for children that are creative, fun, involve coding, robotics, Minecraft. And we also have a, uh, a very active summer camp for a week at a time. Your child can come, children between three and 13, either in the morning or the afternoon or the whole day. And right now, uh, up until tomorrow night, midnight, we have a really good deal, uh, which is our Valentine's Day gift to you of a 14% discount for any summer enrollment. So keep that in mind that you might be interested. All right. So Cynthia and I have recently become friends and recently gotten to know each other, but have a interesting uh, past in terms of kind of overlapping, not really overlapping, but having very, very similar views about learning and children. And what we want to talk about today is what does really good learning look like and feel like? And in our experience, and I believe it really comes into somewhere around 80 years between the two of us, which is a little painful, of experience with teachers, with kids, with principals. And so we wanted to come on today and just spend a few minutes, like what are some of the resounding things that we've seen over and over again in really good environments for learning? So um, I'm gonna start with the word trust because that came up as we were preparing. And do you wanna riff on that word, Cynthia? Well, yes, um, in lots of ways. Um, I don't know if I can. Um, I, I think um, there's something about trusting that whether that's the learner, teacher, facilitator will all get something, something joyous out of their experience. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, you know, I, I've been to workshops. Well, for instance, Gary Steger gives a workshop and the, the educators that attend it, if they've never attended anything like it before, some of them in the beginning are doubtful that things will click. Right. And that's because it looks shapeless in this, this particular workshop looks shapeless. Mm -hmm. There are lots of uh, materials, but what do you do with them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because uh, people are encouraged to communicate with each other, to collaborate with each other, and to trust that each has some past knowledge that will really contribute to what they're doing, it kind of... Uh, falls into place and they create and they feel that's it they feel the creation they're proud of what their experience has been right and it's the same thing in um in a learning environment where there's a teacher and child um that uh there's an openness um, yeah, you have a, a plan. You have to have a plan. Um, and the plan is so wonderful that you can use it as a springboard. And once you start it, you can go in a totally different direction because yep. you have a plan. Yep. Yep. And you have to, you kind of trust that your interests get perked and so do, does the, the other learners 
in, in your community. And I emphasize learners because whether I play the role of teacher or facilitator, I'm a learner. I'm basically a learner. And that's what's so exciting for me, that yep. I'm always learning. I trust that I trust that this experience is going to surprise me. <laughs> and it does. So I, I think that, that there's trust on so many different levels in what you're saying. Um, there's a child's trust of a teacher or a parent or a babysitter, uh, you know, in, a, in any kind of learning situation. But also there's the adult's trust that in, in a child, there is capacity to invent, to learn, um, either is it adults is teaching children or teaching other teachers, uh, that this, this sort of uh, is a very different approach than the funnel of learning through a teacher down to the child. Uh, we're all learning together. But yes. I think there are a couple really important words in there, trust and joy uh, and uh, fun. I has to, it has to have, and not all learning is easy, but there has to be something compelling and exciting in there too. Yes. And, and project-based learning, I think is that idea. It, it doesn't just, oh, this week we're going to do projects. <laughs> it, it, it's the um, underpinning of it that, and that's why plans can, once you have a plan, you can jump in different directions. Right. Uh, they say that after uh, air traffic controllers, you know, I've been repeating this line for a long time and I should make sure it's correct, but it's such a great line. I'll repeat it one more time. <laughs> after air traffic controllers, the demands per second on teachers is almost as great as air traffic controllers. And it, it's really true in an active, alive classroom. Um, yes. I remember uh, when I was a full-time teacher and I kind of called a class meeting to go over where was everybody at and where were we going from here? And <clears throat> this little boy turned to me and he said, Miss Hart, I don't have time for a meeting. I'm too busy with my project right now. And <laughs> you, know, you could look at that from a number of perspectives. Uh, a more traditional teacher might go, well, he wasn't very respectful to me, uh, which I didn't take it that way. The other way I took it was he is so involved in what he's doing. What a great thing that we've gotten to that place in the classroom. So, And then the other thing is um, delegating. Uh, you, you know, I can't. The, it, there used to be this slogan a about asking Ask three before me. Yeah, right. that's fine. But I think having delegating, like, listen, would you help me with these? Right. Yeah. And right. So making a, a few assistants. I, I try, I teach my mentors at RoboFund the phrase class experts because uh, in a more uh, traditional classroom, okay, everyone's going to learn what a variable is, or everyone's going to learn what a loop is, but everyone's not ready to learn that at the same time. So uh, one way that I've come to do this is if you're ready in your grant game to learn about this function, come over to my computer and I'll show you. And I'll show a small group of kids. And then once they've done it a few times, another child comes to me, I'll say, okay, who's one of my class experts who learned how to do this? And then that really changes the dynamic in a classroom. It does. It, it, um, the expert feels, gets more articulate. And, mm -hmm. and that's another key thing, getting, uh, encouraging people to talk about what they do and putting it into words is a whole other learning experience. And yes. the pride and the debugging strategies, you know, because <laughs> um, it's not easy to teach. And, and um, it, uh, 
anyway, I, I, I think uh, having assistance is first, you can't handle all the, everybody. And yes, it, it, it makes it easier on the teacher, but it really changes the classroom dynamic to more of a collaborative than. Um, yes, but and having appointing people in that role, it may change every day. Right. Um, encourages asking someone. Right, right. I, I think especially now, I, I was listening to something on the radio yesterday about uh, a, a guy in San Francisco whose wife was saying, you're getting weird. You need to see people more. And they were trying to create a way to get to know their neighbors. And I think we're all in this place where we just haven't talked to people. And, you know, it comes down to children too. And it's so important for learning. You know, the, the stage of doing is one thing, but to have to explain a project to somebody else really brings your learning to a new place. And it's really good for kids. Yeah, even articulating the question. Yes. Which I often have difficulty with. <laughs> yes. So while we we're preparing for this, uh, well, the, we were talking about uh, leadership and uh, leadership so that in learning communities bigger than just one classroom in a school. Uh, do you remember what you had said about leadership? We were, we were talking about how it, it, it can happen in an individual classroom, but in the environments that really are very fluent, and this is throughout the whole school, it often comes from having a really good leader a good principle. Oh, the atmosphere, the culture of of the school, right? Or the district or the community right. is very, very important. It really plays key roles on the, the um, children's or learners' sense of themselves as learners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just, I see what you were, I was just in a, with a group last night and conversation, there were two people that were really significant leaders. One ran a school, the first school that had every, every child had a laptop mm -hmm. and the other ran a district and incredible things happened. The teachers um, took on the role of learner teacher. And uh, now what's happening? That was the question. <laughs> and I had to say, what happened is you two retired. Right. And that's very crucial who the leaders are and what they'll encourage or, or you know, what funding you, I, I think it's very important when using computers is that teachers have adequate professional development. That the same kind of thing you would give, you'd want to give uh, the young people. And that is time to mess around you know, David Hawkins' term messing about is still very relevant. Um, you've got to have the freedom to play so that you know that uh, it isn't really play. It's really experimenting. Right. Right. And I think that it's, and, it's not something we give teachers enough of. Yeah, uh, yes, there's a little bit more going on in initial training. I noticed with when the SNAP was being introduced to high schools in, in a funded area, they did have professional development more than a weekend. <laughs> or it was a continual tuning in. Right. And... Um, but I remember projects in the 70s and 80s where that wasn't the case. And people wondered 
you know, what was wrong. And it's always the leadership and the community, the culture. Right, right. It's, it's environments that value joy and trust the learners and trust the teachers. And, yes. And that's, and, and in defense of administrators, uh, you know, I'm in New York City and I work with many, many principals and the demands on them from all sides are huge. Uh, right. And uh, I, uh, this will come up in a later uh uh, heart to heart, but we just received a National Science Foundation grant, and I'm so excited to be working with two different schools in Man one in Manhattan and one in Brooklyn, with a little robot called the the Finch. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'll I remember that my job I I did this with a team of people from Teachers College, and uh, my job was to find the schools and to work with the principals to get things started or to to bring them on board to say, do you wanna be a part of this? It may take us a while to get funded, which we just got funded. And uh, one of the principals came to one of the meetings and uh, said, I really wanna be with you completely, but I have to warn you that today is the first day of my summer program and that the DOE, Department of Education in New York City has decided a community-based organization is running my summer program, which is a great idea, except for they're highly understaffed and my kids deserve more. And I was just so taken by her care of what would happen to her children. And that she's like, I'm gonna to try to be in this meeting, but I have to be on call to help if my kids need it. And, you know, it's a very, very hard job to be a principal in an underfunded school, which many, many, many are in New York City. So in a later podcast, I'll talk all about what we're going to do with this National Science Foundation grant. We'll probably check in regularly. Uh, but the idea is to improve uh, the teaching of math and the attitudes about math with Latinx children and black kids in two different schools. So that as they grow up, math is something that they like and can connect to all areas of their life. So, so that's right. exciting. Um, one of the questions that, uh, you, I love my conversations with Cynthia because there's times when you just get railing about something and it's so fun to listen to you. And the, the last thing that you were talking about a few days ago was uh, where teachers are looking for an answer versus an exploration of something. Do you remember this? A little bit? Yeah. Okay, so your point was that in a really great project-led class, there isn't one answer you're looking for. Okay. Well, that's that's been un underlying the whole conversation so far. Yeah, it, totally, totally, yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> um, and again, you can't. It, it, you. It's trust again, right. but also trust and experience. Yep. Because you can't trust this if you, uh, by being told. You have to witness, be part of. When I was doing some uh, teacher training, one of the things I encouraged, uh, teaching teachers to teach children to use logo, a programming language. Yep. Um, what I encouraged them to do is not... It, it is not work with a class, but work with individual children and crawl into that child's head is how I would phrase it. Right. That um, it, it's a very different kind of teaching learning with one child or maybe two um, because you really do see the the twists and turns of the other person's thinking. Yep. yep. And you are willing to capitalize on it. Yep. And when you are working with a group, you, um, that opportunity is um, 
covered because you've had all these people to pay attention to. But often it's a good way to start to do a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-two and then you have a basis of experience that will help. That's, that's what, in my teacher training experience, that's what I've done. And it's very eye-opening. It's, it's the same kind of thing that teachers get when they start programming. Right. It's over and over an aha experience. And quite, it's, it's joyful to, to, to be able to crawl into that person's head. Yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, this this brings up two things. One, uh, right now we're uh, experimenting with teaching Python. Uh, our parents mm -hmm. are asking for it over and over again. So um, I'm in the process of working with one of my uh, young mentors and writing a Python curriculum, um, which is very open ended and you know addresses a lot of what we're talking about. But uh, we've been working on it for a while, and so he's doing his first two classes with kids. And in one class, it's a private lesson. And in the other class, there's four or five kids. And it's so exciting to hear each week, you know, what worked with the one child completely didn't work with the other kids. And, and that's teaching. Um, you know, it is. And if it were a different child that it was working with, it yeah. would be a different story. And right. isn't that remarkable? Right. I mean, but to be in touch with that is... Uh, is something to treasure as a teacher. Right. And I think teach I think teachers are not taught to treasure that. Uh, and that it's it, that, that the really good teachers that we know from our lives and that we've seen with our own self as children or that we've had as adults who have taught us or that we see with our own children, they love seeing the learning going on. Yes. Yes. So I, I want to flip this from the point of view of a parent who might be listening to this. What do you notice uh, when your child is having a good learning experience? What, what, what things, and I, you know, I can say that, you know, with my own son who I pulled out of school because it wasn't working for him and reluctantly, but then happily homeschooled him. What I noticed when learning was happening really well is that I had to get out of the way that, you know, he was on his trajectory and um, we had one homework assignment in the fourth grade and he was so excited about it. He's like, mom, I'll keep going on this one. This isn't really homework. This, this I want to do, <laughs> you know, so. Well, yes, an involvement. The, involvement. The, the young person is really in, involved and you can see both the struggle and the aha that right. works in their their head and they and an independence all of that is what you're talking about is an independence in the learner so i just came up with a involved invested excited and independent um all of those have to be there in some way so and, well, I and think I, they are i there are other things too but oh, they yeah. are yeah what are some of the other things you're thinking? Um, Purpose, like a goal that well, is meaningful. The delight, delight and joy and um, self, self satisfaction. Yep. Yep. I'm writing these down. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but they're such good ones. And, and then comes the thing in, in computing is, oh, I want to do that. And the pride that somebody has that the other people want to copy in a good, in a good environment. Right. And I think I, I really uh, take my hat off to Mitchell Resnick and Scratch. Yeah. For yeah. Remixing. Right. That when you... When you copy somebody, if you if you credit that person, you're not stealing. You're you're building right. on what somebody else has done. And remixing is a fabulous term. And I think so much of learning is 
you can't invent everything yourself. You have to build on what others have done. Right. So, so that actually brings, go ahead. The joy that you see from the initial, <laughs> the initial <laughs> person to show what they built on somebody else's build. Right. So there, <laughs> there's also in here community. Community, uh, absolutely. So, uh, which I think we're all struggling to find our communities again. And um, yeah. I and, think it, when, when you listen to people, community is a biggie. Yes. People who have been successful in creating um, a school, I mean, a large, uh, not just a classroom, but uh, it's like um, uh, the, the Italian people that everybody loves. Reggio Emilia. That's Reggio Emilia. Reg, Reggio Emilia. That right. is big time community. Right. And a lot of people who say they're doing Reggio Emilia don't understand right. that it, it, it requires and it is a big community of learning. Right. It's, I mean, I think that uh, when you have a struggling uh, child in school, which I had, one of the things I was really struck with is how much schools really want, want to say to parents, just leave your kid to us. We'll deal with them. We know the best. And that's not community. It, we, have to, we have to be with our children together, with their teachers, with their principals. Um, well, but then there's the other thing. I want my child to learn this. And why aren't you teaching my child that? Yeah, that, that's totally <laughs> true. Totally, yes. It, it, and, you know, all of this is not easy. This is and not easy balances to find. Um, I remember, I think one of the people you're referring to is David Loder from um, Australia. And I, I years ago heard a lecture where he said, you know, all faculty meetings aren't rosy. We are all not going to agree about things, but we're going to discuss things. And I think that- That's the big thing is to allow discussion right. and to listen to the discussion. Yes, yes. So, so as usual, this has been a really, really fun conversation. Um, I want, and, um, do you have any closing comments that you want to tell our, our audience or thoughts that you have that have come up? I, I, um, if you're wondering about becoming a teacher and using computers, come, welcome. That's all That's I have to say. You're That's in for a lot of the incredible delightful experiences because you really get you get to see people's thinking in a very different way than you do with um, because because they're communicating their thinking with the computer thank you so much Cynthia <laughs> yeah thank you bye bye so I just want to wrap up by saying um, Cynthia has over 40 years of experience in this field as an educator, as a creator, and we're very, very, I'm very grateful for your time with us. Uh, I also want to uh, let you know again about RoboFun. We're on 102nd and Broadway, and right now uh, is an amazing opportunity for our summer with a 14% discount for coding classes, robotics classes, um, and we run classes all the time. Next week, we have camp. New York City schools are closed next week. Um, and if you're interested, please go to robofund.org. And I love questions. So if you have a question, it's laura at robofund.org. So thanks again. And I hope everyone has a good afternoon. Thank you.